Hello, welcome to the Blythe Ray Business News. Today, we're joined by Nigel Robinson, CEO of Central Asia Metals, or fondly known as Camel. Nigel, welcome. Hi, Megan, how are you doing? Good, thank you. So Camel recently re released its interim results. Please, can you provide us with an overview? Yeah, sure. Thanks for the opportunity, Megan. Um, I think we're in pretty good shape, actually. We've had uh, in the first six months of this year a strong performance in, I have to say, what's been you know challenging economic headwinds, and they still prevail. Unfortunately, we've got you know metal prices that we deal in are all down around about seventeen percent period on period. Uh, we're, you know, as a lot of businesses, there's cost inflation of around about ten to fifteen percent in the areas in which we operate. Uh, and for the first time ever, we've, we're, we're suffering a little bit from uh, tax increases uh, in the first time in a decade, actually, in Kazakhstan. But despite all those things, I mean, if we look at production, first of all, uh, we're well on track to hit our production guidelines for the year. We produced uh, 6,700 tonnes of copper in the first six months, um, 9,700 tonnes of zinc, and around about 13,700 tonnes of lead, which puts us well on track to meet our guidance for the year. So that's all positive and we did that in a very safe manner so we had what's known as an LTIFR of just 0 0.8 which meant we had one incident at Sasa one's too many as you've heard me say many times but we had one which recorded an LTIFR of 0 0.8 and our target for this year was 1.3 so good safe production all on track our projects on site uh, they're also on track we'll talk about those later no doubt the Sasa transition project to Pacefill mining uh, and also the solar farm that we're, we're building at, at, at Coonrad but I suppose this morning and today is, is very much about the economic performance of the business in the first uh, six months and despite those headwinds that I mentioned a minute ago uh, we've recorded revenue just south of a hundred million dollars and an associated EBITDA that's earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization of about 49 million dollars so a strong margin of 49% on EBITDA. That generated a free cash flow, which, as you know, is a very important metric for us at Camel because it uh, we focus on that for what dividend we're going to pay. And we generated free cash flow in the period of $24.1 million in that period. And we're announcing today a dividend to our shareholders of nine pence per share. Uh, and that's showing really confidence in the business for the future, despite these uh, difficult times that everybody's going through at the moment with the economies. Uh, a strong balance sheet. We have no debt. And we've got strong cash balances of $50.6 million reported at the half year. So a strong economic performance, confidence for the future and good production uh, performance also in the first six months. Great. Thank you. You mentioned the transition to Paceville Mining at Sasa. What will this yeah. mean for the project? Uh, it's important to us. We've been working on this for quite some time. As you know, you know, we did a review when we first bought the mine over five, five years ago uh, and decided that this was the best way to take the mine into the future. Uh, and we're coming to the end of that project in terms of the expenditure on the capital infrastructure. And it's going to have a number of benefits for us. First of all, on the economic side of it, it will mean it's a more accurate method of mining. It will mean that we can process more metal for the ore that we're processing. So we'll have higher recovery, lower dilution. We'll be able to access areas of the ore body, which is quite a complicated ore body body where it maybe narrows some of the lenses we've hit, you might have heard me say in the past they pinch and swell and become narrow that would have been almost impossible to mine with any kind of commerciality with sub-level caving so moving to pasteville mining will allow us to access those areas and also not to leave behind large pillows for structural strength which we we'll need to do for sub-level caving so there's a number of economic benefits that it brings uh, for us also within the mine as we go lower in the mine um, we, we're encountering these geotechnical pressures as you go lower into the mine and with sub-level caving that made it become harder to mine some of those lower areas and with cut and fill mining you, you avoid those issues primarily because you fill the voids with concrete and therefore you give the structural solidity to the areas that you've actually the mined the metal from so there's a couple of key benefits there and I guess the last one really which has been a major benefit that we've been aware of for the past three or four years is the management of waste on site. Um, it's quite a constrained area, really, it's quite a tight valley. We have a, a tailings facility, a, a traditional wet dam facility, uh, and extending that further downstream into the valley would have been extremely difficult. And so this allows us to put around about 70 to 75 percent of our tailings either underground or into the dry stack tailings, which is part of the um, part of the whole project of transitioning to paste fill mining. So quite a number of benefits for us. Um, and we're coming to the end of that, that capital program towards the end of this year and into next year. Great. Thanks for the update. Um, you also look like you've been pretty busy on the business development front over the past six months. Can you give us an update on this? 
Uh, yeah, by all means. I mean, we we are putting a lot of activity to grow the business. As you know, we've got two very good assets, one in North Macedonia, one in Kazakhstan. Both got long life over 10 years, both low cost and generating good cash flows, as I've already mentioned. But we do need to grow the business because ultimately they are finite assets. So we put a lot of effort into this. Um, we are reporting today that over the past six months, we've looked at around about 22 opportunities, signed five NDAs. Uh, and had three site visits. In fact, we've actually had two particular opportunities to put focused a lot of effort on uh, with economic, with the, sorry, not economic, but consultants externally that we employed. Uh, unfortunately, neither of those opportunities came to fruition. So a lot of activity. Um, so, you know, we continue to do that. Yeah, we've said all along that it is opportunistic, uh, but we will continue to look at opportunities. Um, and I think one other thing we've done is reconfirmed with our board strategy we're following, just to re-emphasize that. We are, with our strong balance sheet, looking at early stage opportunities that we can invest in from that, uh, invest into those opportunities from our own balance sheet without having to go to the market, whilst in parallel to that, looking for the bigger transaction that might be transformational to us and take us to the next level in terms of scale and liquidity. Okay. And expanding on those earlier stage opportunities a little bit, you also announced the agreement with Terra Exploration. Can you tell yes. me what that means for the company? Um, well, this is this aspect I mentioned before, the, the kind of two pronged strategy whereby we're looking at early stage opportunities. And uh, Kazakhstan is, is a huge country, as, as you know, it's a very prospective country that uh, we know it quite well. We've been operating there for some time. So it's this is quite exciting, whereby we've teamed up with a, a team of fairly experienced uh, geologists who are experienced both in Kazakhstan and internationally. I've got a very strong database of information. They use satellite imagery. Uh, they've got strong analytical skills, maybe skills that we haven't necessarily got within our camp team and our geology team uh, based at Kunrad. So what we've done is teamed up with them on a consultancy basis, agreed a scope of work to go and look for opportunities within Kazakhstan. We've already had a, a little bit of success and we're applying for a few, few new licenses in that area. That doesn't mean it will definitely, definitely become a mine in the, in the long term because it is quite, uh, you know, it's quite opportunistic in many ways. And there's there's often lots of failures on, on, on exploration projects as well as successes. So we recognise that, but is a move in the right direction to actually find the next opportunity in Kazakhstan for us. The intention will be that once we find something of, of meaningful interest in terms of an inferred or an indicated resource, we would then take that to the next stage. And that next stage will involve something that we've already done, which is set up a new company uh, in the Astana International Financial Centre. Um, it's got various tax advantage and legal advantage in the way it's operated. So we've set a new company up there called Camel Exploration and any asset that we think is worth taking to the next stage, we will farm into that company. And that company will be owned 80% by Camel and 20% by Terra Exploration. And then as we work along and it goes further down the development line, if it looks like it's going to go into something bigger than that, we will transfer that over to a, what's known as a net smelter royalty arrangement with, with Terra uh, Exploration. So trying to move things along with experts in the field uh, and get to uh, an opportunity in Kazakhstan that we can grow from a greenfield site. I look forward to hearing more about that in the future. And we've discussed many times that you maintain very strong ESG credentials. Can you tell yeah. us about some of this over the period? Um, yes, again, you know, we have, as you, as you well say, we're pretty well advanced for a company of our size in terms of reporting and our, and our objectives that we have for sustainability. We've continued that in the first six months of this year. On the reporting front, we issued our fourth sustainability report to GRI standards uh, earlier in the year. We also issued our second climate change report. Uh, we are a supporter of TCFD, which is the um, financial disclosures for climate change reporting. So we're, we're kind of supporting that and, and trying to work our way towards uh, uh, reporting in that manner. And the other thing we're going to do is from next year, we will be reporting our scope three emissions. So there's a lot of movements and a lot of progression made by the team on sustainability reporting. And I think closer to home. Um, reporting is one aspect, but also we need in turn to have some objectives. Where are we improving? And as you know, uh, Megan, we have five key pillars in our sustainability uh, approach to the business, which is health and safety, looking after the community, looking after the environment, the governance and stewardship of the business, and also looking after our people and how we employ people locally. And in each one of those areas, we've set quite challenging objective uh, targets to actually deliver upon. And we have, we have marked against those for our bonuses and our remuneration uh, as an executive team as well. And I'll give you an example. We've increased the expenditure that we're spending locally on the local community from 0.25% of the revenue to 0.5% of the revenue. 
Um, on the environmental side, you'll have heard me talk in the past that on greenhouse gas emissions, we have a target to reduce that by 50% by 2030 from the 2020 base. And we've also set other, other targets on waste management and water management across the patch. So, you know, making good progress both on the reporting side, as well as the objectives we set ourselves as a business to be measured in terms of how we deliver on sustainability targets. Thanks. That's been a really good overview of the interim results. But just before you go, what else can we expect from Camel for the rest of the year? Um, well, I think it's more of the same, really, Megan, to be honest with you. We need to deliver on that production target. I said we're on track, but, uh, you know, we've got between now and the end of the year uh, where it's a production operation, things can go wrong. So we need to make sure we hit those production targets safely. We need to look after the cost base because it is a cost inflationary environment out there for everybody. So we need to take care of that. On the business development side, we'll keep looking for opportunities as we have done in the first half of the year. Maybe we'll land on one and we'll be able to announce something. But again, that, that will depend very much on the due diligence we do on those particular opportunities we're looking at. Uh, and last but by no means least, we'll bring the Pastefill Mining Transition projects, not to a close, there will be work being conducted in 2024, but we're well on track with the Paste Backfill plant that's been completely built and we should end commissioning by the end of this year. We started on the dry stack tailings plant uh, and we're well advanced on the uh, central decline, which is another part of all those projects. So we'll be bringing those very much to the end of that capital projects uh, program uh, and be transferring over to Paceville Mining at the back end of this year and then into next year on a transition basis as well. So lots to look forward to, lots to do um, and pretty exciting times against what I was, as I said right at the beginning, pretty tough economic challenges that everybody's facing out there with, uh, with the world's economy. Thank you for your time today. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Okay, thanks very much, Megan.